What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome to my predictions video for the horror show ah! at Extreme Rules, happening tomorrow on the WWE Network, another quarantine-style pay-per-view at the PC, and with their cinematic beardness, like what's gonna happen in that swamp fight. So, we have seven announced matches for this card as of Saturday morning. That could change by Sunday evening, I don't know. Some stuff is being put off to Raw and SmackDown, like Big Show and Randy Orton is Raw. The bar fight between Sheamus and Jeff Hardy is SmackDown. That's next week, that's not this Sunday. So let's get down to our seven matches that are announced for this Sunday evening and predict who might win at this show. Number one. Your U.S. champion, Apollo Crews. Crews can't lose. Goes one-on-one -on -one with MVP. Big things popping, little things stopping for that U.S. championship. And MVP has the new design of the title. And Apollo has the old one. We do have Bobby Lashley in the corner of MVP. And that could spell disaster for Apollo Crews. But you never know who might come out to help Apollo, Cedric, Ricochet. There could be all kinds of shenanigans. This, this might actually be on the pre-show. I don't know. But I feel like this whole thing is building towards eventually a Bobby Lashley U.S. Championship and an MVP-led stable of guys that might at some point include Apollo Crews. But right now, I think Apollo retains that title. All I see on screen now is a rusty truck and Bray Wyatt going to work. All right, so... We have our SmackDown Women's Championship. Bailey Dose Straps, uh, accompanied by Sasha Three Brands, is taking on Nikki Cross, and I would assume Alexa Bliss somewhere in that match in the background. And there you go. I think Bray Wyatt just won that spawn fight. So Bailey versus Nikki. Play with Nikki. Uh, this one's going to be interesting because. I feel like the order of the two women's matches is going to determine what might happen in both of those matches. Which one comes first, who wins, and who loses in that whole shuffle. Because certainly, you could see a reality in which we have both Bailey and Sasha holding two belts. Both the Raw and women's and the tag teams having all the belts on all the brands. Because as we know from NXT, Sasha equals ratings, right? So, that would make sense. But do you want to cap off Asuka at the knees this early? That's a whole different question. But first of all, Bailey versus Nikki. I don't see them taking the belt off of Bailey just yet. I feel like if you're going to have this team of Bailey and Sasha eventually self destruct, it's going to be because Sasha got screwed. I can't see it happening because of Bailey got screwed. But hey, I could be wrong. So I think that Bailey retains the belt here. I think if anything, she'll lose it at SummerSlam, which is the next show here in August. Now, the flip side, obviously, being this match, which is Asuka and Sasha. And this one, again, I don't think you should cap off Asuka at the knees right now, given that you just made her champion because Becky Lynch had to go be a mom, right? And Asuka certainly uh, has been amazing the past couple of months, so I'm not sure who better, right, as a more credible challenger than Sasha... But, again, I feel like, if anything, Bailey might end up costing the match for Sasha here, and then eventually we get that Sasha turn on Bailey, Or perhaps they'll, they'll never do it. I don't know. They'll keep teasing it forever, and then never do it. Also, a possibility in wrestling, but it would happen on a big show, or leading towards a big show. So, your tag team titles on the line, which is the New Day, taking on Cesaro and Nakamura for those SmackDown Tag Team titles in a tables match. Not a whole lot of extreme here at the horror show. Extreme rules in terms of match stipulations besides this one and Ray and maybe Drew. We, we don't know yet, right? But this one in particular, I think the New Day retains those titles because why not? They were supposed to fight the Forgotten Sons. That kind of didn't happen off, off in the background. So who other... Would you have as credible challengers? And if you're going to do it, you wouldn't do it here at Extreme Rules. 
but because it is a tables match scenario, you could have shenanigans, you could have new champions, but I just don't see new champions happening, on, honestly, on this whole evening, uh, to be honest. So there is that whole bit of business. Let's get into, okay, let's get into Rey Mysterio and Seth freaking Rollins in an eye for an eye match, right? And this match, unlike the eye for an eye match which involved Moxley and Santana and AEW back in February, that happened this year, this has been the longest year ever, right? That the way to win this match, according to WWE, is to literally extract the eye of your opponent. Now, I say literally, but not literally, because that would be inhumane, right? They're going to apparently have some kind of a CGI business here or something, according to the dirt sheets. Even that could be false. You never know. They're dirt sheets, right? But you have to, like, think more long-term, or at least I think more long-term. Because if you're going to have somebody lose an eye, right, it would make more sense for it to be Mysterio, He's at the end of his career. He already wears a mask. He can already do the little thing with the little uh, black thing over the eye with the mask. And he can see through it, but you can't see that he doesn't have an eye, right? That can already be done. Whereas, if Seth Rollins loses an eye, even in kayfabe, he has a lot of years left in his career. You can't have eye patch pirate Seth Rollins for the next 10 freaking years because you don't come back from losing an eye. You don't get surgery to replace an eye. You say, oh, I have a glass eye. But even that, if you can't prove you have the, the glass eye by popping it out, then what's the point? It. I'm sure they have some kind of solution in kayfabe to explain away why somebody got their eye back. But just stop insulting our intelligence as wrestling fans just a little bit sometimes. Like... Why couldn't it have been a mask versus hair match, right? That's simple. Do that. But no, it is literally extracting an eye. After last year, Vince said that they don't do blood and guts, and this is how can you get any more blood and guts than someone's eye being ripped out, even with CGI. It's dumb, right? So I think Seth wins the match, Ray loses the eye, and there's Asuka pinning Sasha Banks for that Raw Women's title. No one is ready for Asuka. Now, will this be the scenario where we get Dominic betraying his father and joining Seth Rollins' little cult thing? Possible. I think that is the end goal, potentially, but we don't know yet. But I think that having Seth lose here would make no sense for his long-term not-having-an-eye scenario. But we'll see. Right? It should be interesting, if nothing else. So, moving on to our two main events, or I assume the two main events. We have Braun Strowman versus Bray Wyatt in a swamp fight. This match is non-title. I assume it's going to be cinematic, as it would have to be in a swamp fight, in a you know non-traditional, like, not having a ring type thing. But here's the thing, right? Braun Strowman beat... Uh, sweater wearing Mr. Rogers Bray Wyatt. Now Braun Strowman is fighting original cult leader Swamp Man Bray Wyatt. And Braun Strowman claims he's not afraid of the Fiend. And my assumption was at some point we're going to have Braun Strowman versus the Fiend. SummerSlam sounds like a likely thing here. So Braun Strowman again wins this match. Because why wouldn't he? He's not fighting the Fiend. He can't beat the Fiend. He can beat regular Bray Wyatt, but he cannot beat The Fiend. I think that is the eventual end goal, end story of this whole scenario. So yes, Braun overcomes his fears here, but it doesn't matter. Because eventually, The Fiend will rear his head and have to face that whole thing, perhaps at SummerSlam. Now, the main event, I would hope we will see, is McIntyre and Ziggler, as seen here. And the rumor is, the unknown stipulation might just be a TLC match. Now, why you'd have a TLC not at TLC? I don't know, man. Look, we're in a quarantine. Who knows anymore, right? But I don't see any reason for Drew to lose this match. I think potentially we'll see Drew versus Randy Orton at SummerSlam. But right now, they're going to keep that belt 
on Drew by hook or by crook. If Dolph was smart, his stipulation would be banning the Claymore from the match. Like, that, that'd be a smart thing, but no, it's supposedly, and again, we'll see on Sunday, supposedly a TLC bit of business between Dolph and Drew. Should be a great match, but yes, Drew McIntyre remains your WWE champion. So to recap, who I think is going to win at the show on Sunday, Apollo Crews retains. Seth Rollins wins the match and tears out Rey Mysterio's eye. Bailey retains. Asuka retains. New Day retains. McIntyre retains and Braun Strowman beats Bray Wyatt. But honestly, like, could we see a belt or two change hands? I've been wrong before. It could happen. And there it is. Like I said, Drew McIntyre beats Dolph Ziggler. On the tax log, thanks for watching. Let me know who you think is going to win down in the comments below. I'll see you next time right here. And I'm out.